Morning guys, welcome back. Today I've actually come to the Essex coast to Finwick Ho and as soon as I got here this morning I realised I'd made a big mistake. They've got their annual fate today and it's like one big shopping centre. And I don't like shopping centres at the best of times because where you've got shopping centres you've got children and you've got grandpa and you've got granddad and they're all out for a day's outing. And um, I bumped into a couple of photographers and they had also noticed that there was absolutely no wildlife about, which is not surprising because the amount of noise that's further up towards the visitor centre is unbelievable. So I thought I'd give it the benefit of the doubt and come down to the Kingfisher Hide and everything's quiet. But the one good thing about uh, this Essex coast, there's a lot of different reserves to be able to go to. So I'm jumping back into plan B and what I'm going to do is go to Aberton Reservoir First of all, go to the causeway, and what's been shown at the causeway is a great crested grebe that has nested very close to the causeway, and she's sitting on eggs. And when the parents change over, you can actually see the eggs. And yesterday, they had ospreys, they had storks, and you've got spoonbills. That is quite regularly there at the moment so oh and also yesterday they had a black, black swan that came in and I've taken photographs of black swans before in Australia but that was before I was really into photography so I think it'd be nice to get a couple of shots of a black swan because they're quite rare to the UK so I'm going to make my way back now, jump back into the car and uh, go through to Aberton. So I'll catch you guys there. Just goes to show my eyes not in today because I haven't seen a lot of bird life and I literally just walked straight past where the the grebe was nested and she's sitting there at the moment quite content and uh, doesn't look like there's any sign of the partner coming in but uh, still nice to be able to see this bird definitely brings back memories for the last time that I was actually here I lost my Sigma 150 to 600 lens here. I'd just get a brand new monopod with the legs that jut out at the bottom. And there was no wind or anything that day. Put the tripod up, it was quite stable for ages. And then I turned around to get something out of the bag and lo and behold, bump there goes the lens and thank God it landed on the lens and not on the camera. The, uh, the lens I try, I stripped down and s wanted to see if I could actually make a repair but what had happened the pins had actually sheared right off and there was parts that was protruding. I tried to file those pieces down and reassemble it but uh, it's easy to be able to reassemble the mechanical sides but there's a lot of electronics that's in there and I fell down trying to um, put those uh, electronic parts back in very very finicky and it's all this plastic uh, strips that you've got to use special types of glue which I did get but uh, 
it was like trying to do an airfix kit so I just gave up on it and then bought a new lens because I always says to myself that's one lens that I will never ever give up I'll always use it and now with going over to the Canon R7 going over to RF lenses I've come out today with the 800 and I've come out with the um, 75 to 300 Canon lens as well because the one thing about this uh, Canon lens it doesn't uh, zoom in and out it's a fixed aperture and it's a fixed focal length so put the 1.4 converter on the 300 and that gives me a range of about just below 500 and then I've got the full zoom on it to be able to photograph anything up close so it's just a backup and both those lenses are really really light and that is one of the best things about getting this Canon 800 I can hold it all day long and video all day long and the way it's actually going it looks like I don't even need to use a tripod anymore well I'll still use a tripod under certain circumstances but so far I haven't had to use it and anything to be able to reduce rate the, uh, weight these days so anyway I'm going to take a couple of more photographs of this green and then go into the reserve itself see what we've got inside there so I'll catch up with you just now Well I've gone into the reserve now and there's not an awful lot about which I, I didn't really expect. When we go from this transition from winter to spring the build up and everything that we have is really good and winter is a great time for visiting migrants and then spring is when all of our other migrants is coming in and for three months we are practically overwhelmed with the amount of wildlife that were we can see now that we've gone into summer and the back end of 
well, as I say, we've gone into summer. There's a period for about two months in the summer after all the breeding has been done <coughs> and the chicks have started to make the way on their own. It becomes very quiet. <coughs> Excuse me. And the amount of vegetation that we've actually got actually prevents us from being able to see anything. We can hear, always hear an awful lot but as far as being able to see the birds, we can't. It's nice to be able to come out to estuaries like this and reservoirs where the birds are in the open, but it's just the common species that we are actually used to. I was fortunate today that coming to this reservoir reserve before in the past, <coughs> excuse me, I know a couple of good locations and I was keeping my fingers crossed that I'd be able to see this kestrel that's actually here. And he makes his way down right towards the, the end of the reserve and towards where the island hide is. I went into four hides this morning and each one of them is really quiet. So if I've got any advice as far as this time of year is concerned, concentrate on your local areas. Unless you see in social media that there's something that's showing well, that's unusual. Like the main reason that I came through here, like I was saying earlier, we had the osprey that came overhead yesterday. We had a black swan that stopped in Spoonbills have been here for a while, but I didn't manage to be able to see any today. And that's just the nature of the beast. And that, that's wildlife photography. But getting back to the kestrel, he was actually there today. And hovering, hunting, doing his thing. Just really nice to be able to see. But there was one thing that I actually learned today is when you go to the bottom where the reservoir itself is and you walk right along up to the the island hide you don't realize that you're cutting back on yourself and once you leave the the bay hide and start walking along to the uh, the center it's it's not too far away so anyway, I'm going to leave it there guys and stop off, have a cup of coffee and if I see anything on the way out, I'll put it in the end of the video here. The one good thing about this area, it's well documented and we've got the Abiton guys that are really on the ball as far as their photography is concerned and the social media keeping everybody up to date and there was about 10 of these guys that was right at the front of the reserve this morning knew exactly where they were going to I saw them coming out of the car park put the tripods and everything up go out of the reserve again and then along a little pathway and there must have been about 20 of there 20 of them that was there photographing so I might even stop off there and uh, have a look to see what I can find. So cheers guys. Please, if you've liked what you've seen today, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Click the little bell icon that in case of the, in the future that you want any notifications when I'm putting up a new video and then give it a like. And once you give it a like, it always helps with being able to promote the channel. So I'll see you next time, guys. Take care.